sports radio legal analyst. Amy, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. So you're saying that the $200,000 in law school loans paid off? <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. And really lately, especially because there is so much. And I'm going to start with Colin Kaepernick. He's filed a collusion lawsuit. People keep hearing it, but some people are not quite certain exactly what that means and how difficult it is to prove. Give us some of the bare basics there. So that would be relevant to prove that at least two clubs or the league and one club were talking. Like it's a great threshold to prove, though, only two clubs having that type of discussion? That's all you need. And so when a lot of people, it doesn't have to be an express directive, like don't do hire mean? Colin okay. Kaepernick. It can be something that's implied. You can prove implied collusion under the CBA. So like the idea of if, if Colin Kaepernick's taking a knee, you know, that's that's going to look bad for the team out there. Something. What is the timeline on something like this? You're talking about so much discovery. How long could it possibly take to go through all of these conversations, these emails? These well, texts? they will have this advanced computer program basically looking for keywords oh. through huh. all of the document them and use their influence to basically convince the other owners not to hire him as well. And well, now, Dana said, you said you feel like this isn't really that high a burden of well, proof. I, when, when, when you're talking just a couple clubs, it's not that you need 16 clubs here, we're all, or all 32 orchestrated teams. Orchestrated Yeah, together. orchestrated this. It's just two that had that kind of conversation. It doesn't seem that it should be that difficult, but we've never seen a collusion exactly. case in sports actually won. Barry Bonds didn't win his collusion case. Right, and that's probably because the standing and raise awareness about racial inequality. But they take it a step further and they say that this was coerced and coordinated by the President of the United States. They are bringing the President in and saying that really these NFL owners were just puppets of the President's campaign. She violated it. Right. But public officials cannot interfere with your right to free speech. So by them saying, wait a second, let's remove the middlemen, the NFL and the owners, they were just a to free speech within the labor institution. And, and the reason they're saying this is because if they don't win at the grievance level, unfair labor practices that violate constitutional rights. So just hearing that, I'll say this is not the last <laughs> of this conversation. <laughs> Amy, we are out of time. We appreciate all of us. Yeah. So important, right? So important. Uh, and it's knowing no matter what you do, it's knowing that it's your body that's taking you someplace. You. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about the fact that my body cooked a human. Yeah, I know. And that you're just talking about <laughs> it. And that you look amazing after that one two months ago. I just, I just would say to every single girl out there, be us. Yeah. Yeah. So important, right? So important. Uh, and it's knowing no matter what you do, it's knowing that it's your us. Yeah. So important, right? So important. Uh, and it's knowing no matter what you do, it's knowing that it's your.